and then your uh, to actually save the configuration uh, once you're done with all the the changes you want to make um, you can either do a copy space running dash config space startup dash config or more simplified a copy space run space start which copies your whatever say currently in your running config saves it to your startup config so that'll be loaded directly into um, NVRAM whenever you're um, you, you start up um, but if you if you don't want to do that there's actually a, a simpler command that I prefer which is the write mem which performs exactly the same function that, that we would with that so you know, from here uh, I'm out of configuration mode so it's fine And I don't actually want to keep that, um, so I'm going to do another command to uh, delete all that. And you see it um, ask me if I want to do that. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And so it'll, uh, it'll delete everything in, uh, all that's in NVRAM, which includes the startup config. Um, so whenever this starts back up, it's not going to have any configuration on it. And then uh, on your show commands, um, <coughs> these are pretty important um, just general network troubleshooting over time show running dash config lets you see the what's what's currently running and you saw me do that a minute ago um, you know I just did show run but it uh, this is you know running so it's still there in memory even though I erased the other stuff um, you know, you're able to you know, spacebar down and get through the whole thing I can copy and paste this config and compare it to other configs get a good look at it that kind of thing um, you've also got your uh, your show interfaces command so if you just wanted to do a show interfaces it's going to give you a lot of like really nitty gritty on every single interface um, if I wanted to specify just a particular interface it would be the same command followed by the interface name so let's say I just want to look at FA2 it'll just give me the output for FA2 you got your all your information about errors that kind of thing five minute input and output rate all that stuff um, and then if you want a, uh, an overview of all of your interfaces, the show IP interface brief command is um, pretty important. You saw me enter that one as well, show IP and brief. And you get a, a real good like you know, 10,000 foot view of all your, your various interfaces, their status, um, you know, the, what admin up or down, uh, whether line protocol is up or down. This, none of these have anything physically connected, so they're all down on the protocol. But um, outside of the fast Ethernet 4, which I did not know shut whenever I configured it a moment ago, um, they're all up, and your IP addresses as well. And then um, if you've got a T1, uh, you can use the show controller command. It's pretty important on, on T1 troubleshooting, actually. Show you a lot of information on that. And then your, uh, your show flash and your show version commands are also important. Your show flash, um, I would say, is not quite as important because you can get the same information for the most part from show version, but... Uh, show flash shows you you know which iOS version you're running um, you know where it's at and in this case you know in the flash directory if I had multiple iOS's in there I would have them all listed that kind of thing um, but if I do a show version I get a lot more information and it's also going to include that um, that same piece of information we just saw so you know the flash right here it lets me know under the show version the um, Show version is also important. It gives you like a lot of detailed information on the bill, bootstrap, all that kind of stuff. Um, uptime is huge. Um, you know, let me know how long it's been since the route and the power cycle. This is greatly important if you're trying to troubleshoot why a device went down after it came back up. You know, if it's been rebooted or not. So a show version will show you the uptime. Um, it also shows you the uh, the serial number for the processor board if you're trying to identify which specific piece of equipment you're looking at. And then uh, also shows the configuration register so you know what kind of mode it's going to boot into whenever it, it comes up. So that's show version. And then on your, uh, your troubleshooting commands, um, you know, ping and trace are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, just getting, seeing if you can access an IP address, uh, just ping space in the IP address. Um, if you cannot reach an IP address, you're trying to figure out where it's breaking down at. It would just be a trace or trace route space and then the IP address. Um, the show processes command, um, I don't really have to use this too frequently. That's um, usually for weirder issues. Uh, that uh, Show process will show you like um, CPU utilization and um, if, you're, if you're getting, you know, 
throttled up there if there's too many things running or if there's something weird going on with the, the CPU. Um, Telnet and SSH are, are pretty important you know, for trying to access devices to get into them. You, you know, if you want to know what's going on with the router, the best way is going to be to, to get into it and look at the, the configuration and look at the, the errors and logging and all that kind of stuff. And being able to Telnet, you know, Telnet space, the IP address, um, is going to be vastly important there. Um, terminal monitoring, you know, whenever I was um, just, you know, shutting and unshutting interfaces here, you saw the little line uh, interface messages come across just shortly thereafter. That's the, uh, the terminal monitor. That's on, uh, I'm connected via console, and so that is on inherently on the console port. But if you want to enable it for VTY, you'll need to type in the terminal monitor command. To disable it, it's going to be the terminal no monitor. Uh, so it's kind of a different structure than the, um, you know, normally you expect no to be in front of terminal, but in this case it would be terminal no monitor. And then um, you can also use CDP. Uh, CDP is the Cisco Discovery Protocol. Um, it's a proprietary Cisco thing, but it'll it'll give you some visibility of your network if you've got all Cisco devices at least, or mostly Cisco devices. Um, by using the Cisco Discovery Protocol to see like you know what's out there, what's connected to the network. So doing a show CDP neighbors will show you all of your uh, interconnected uh, Cisco devices. Um, and then if you CDP can also be a, a bit of a security flaw. Like say you've got a Cisco device uh, connected to an ISP's WAN, you may want to disable CDP on the uh, the WAN link um, so that you know the ISP and whoever else gets access to their stuff beyond that can't. Um, can't see what kind of equipment you've got there. So uh, to do that, you would just do uh, no CDP enable on that interface. <coughs> and then uh, TFTP, uh, to copy an iOS on a TFTP server to Flash, uh, the command is copy space TFTP space Flash. To copy a config on a TFTP server to the startup config, the command is copy space TFTP space start, as in a starting a startup config. On either of these, it's going to follow with three questions. Um, you know, if you're not, since you're not specifying the IP address and file name and that kind of stuff specifically in the first command, if you do copy space TFTP space flash, it's going to ask you for first the IP address of the uh, the flash or the, uh, the TFTP server. So you plug in the IP, hit enter. Then it's going to ask you for the name of the file on that TFTP server. You know, th like I said, this follows for both the iOS and the the uh, you know, start config. Um, then you you know you paste in exactly or type in exactly what the file name is going to be with its extension. You know whether it's uh, .bin for an iOS or .txt for a uh, a text file with a config on it. Uh, hit enter, and then it's going to ask you the location where you want to save that. And usually that that value is already what you want it to be. Uh, for instance, like on a, a config, it's already going to want inherently think that it should go to the startup config. So you just hit enter there. You don't need to worry about typing something else for that last question unless you want to save it somewhere else specifically.